I wonder if my mother can still see the bodies when she stares into sea. November 8, 2013, Super Typhoon Yolanda was the strongest storm to ever make landfall in the recorded history of the world. Mama tells nightmares of how ocean swallowed her town whole. Foam water rammed into house, snapped off metal locks and flooded the doors open. It's like the winds were searching for me today. When I arrive in Tanawan one month after the typhoon, I do not recognize my mother's home. Roofs crumpled like bald paper. The basketball court where I spent each childhood morning is now an unmarked mass grave. Thirteen holes for over 600 bodies. My homeland is a country of islands counting down the years before we are drowning in a rising Pacific. When I return to the U.S., politicians label climate change a myth deny our existence as if natural disasters only count when there are white bodies to bury. Each year, an average of 20 typhoons hit the Philippines, and my tita tells me God is punishing us. How else can you explain storm surge waves taller than coconut trees, five corpses stuffed into one body bag, names of entire families scribbled onto debris made crosses at the traffic circle turned mass grave? We people, born from ocean, now fear the sea that stole our families. This is not the problem of the Philippines, of the Pacific Islands, of Oceania, long after the news reports. When the next super typhoon has blown away my family's relief tents, we will still be standing. In sea salt flooded rice fields, brown fisher folk demanding, do not turn away from the disasters yet to come. Our islands are in your hands. These spirits sing a warning. Andagat gugutum lagihap. The sea that feeds us will one day grow hungry again.